Good afternoon, everyone. I want to bring you back to this USA Today article claiming that the 400th straight warmer than average month just occurred in April 2018. I pointed out University of Alabama Huntsville satellite temperatures, and I was told, oh no, you can't use that because that's a satellite temperature. We live on the Earth. NOAA, April 2017, 11th warmest on record. April 2018, you notice how they changed the lexicon there, 13th coldest April, which means it moved down two slots in terms of warmth. There's so much fraud with NOAA data out there anyway. I brought you about 300 different articles so you can reference with the NOAA fraud location and how they changed to fit the global warming agenda. But here's the thing about sea ice. It's always only a 39 year record, but the temperature record, they stretch it back to 1880, which makes no sense for me really because, you know, we have sea ice records going back to at least 1901. But it shows that the Northwest Passage is open then too, and that's really inconvenient. And Dr. Wahiduddin pushing out a forecast to 2050 showing global temperatures dropping, unusual anomalies with river ice still hanging about, total snow mass, an apparent record in the Northern Hemisphere, Kilimanjaro glaciers growing. April 2017 flashback, those exact same areas where the U.S. wheat crop was just devastated this year happened last year too. And this video is brought to you by TrueLeafMarket.com, Heirloom and Organic Seeds for any grow zone on the planet. All the links for tonight's video, including all the NOAA temperature data fraud is linked below along with True Leaf Market. They have seed growing and sprouting guides there because it's all about you teaching yourself how to grow food. And just a few days back, I was calling into question the claims from USA Today that the Earth just had its 400th straight warmer than average month. The key is warmer than average. So I threw up the University of Alabama Huntsville satellite temperature data set. That black line right in the center that says 0.0, .0 that's average. Anything below that, that's below average. Anything above it, eh, above average. But when you're claiming 400 months, which is 33.33 years, interesting in the numerology on that, it brings us all the way back to the very peg date that they had to start somewhere back in the 19, what, 80s at the very lowest point, arbitrarily, they just chose that number and said, we're gonna start from here. But anyway, if they did, that's still below normal. I had a couple people write me and say, dude, we don't live in the sky, we live on the earth. Those lower tropospheric temperatures, even though they reflect what happens on the ground, don't really count because whatever was done with the satellites doesn't really count because we can only use Earth-based temperature stations, which NOAA is known for fraud and even adding record temperatures, but they don't even have stations. So I'll play the game with you. Here we go. If you can't use the satellite temperature data set, which they're using to prove global warming, let's see what else there is out there. Let's just start back in March 2018. If we're at the seventh highest participation trophy March temperatures and they're squawking on the media when it's the seventh highest March, you know they're grasping at straws at this point. And when the news was talking about April 2017, let's go back a single year, the 11th warmest. That is like a double participation trophy, 11th warmest. And then we come to this year, fast forward, it dropped two spots to 13th coldest. And also notice how they changed the lexicon from warmest to coldest. They even have a nice temperature gradient map here with the mean temperature departure, and you'll see the blue is where we grow our crops. Which brings me back to April 2017, looking for a trend because I'm really into trying to forecast where we're going to lose our crops globally first. Notice where it says April 2017, prolonged freezing temperatures and the snow that fell throughout central Nebraska and western Kansas. Fast forward to this year and the U.S. wheat crop was devastated in these exact same spots. And the naysayers are already beyond say, oh, that's only talking about the United States. It's not the whole globe. Okay, I already took you into consideration. I already know how you think. Global climate, March 2018. Sixth warmest. Ah, I'm going to give you another participation trophy for the sixth warmest Nothing even close to being the warmest like we were told. How about global ocean temperatures where most they don't even have any buoys out there. What they do is rely on satellite data, which I was told you can't use to realistically chart what's happening 
on the earth but wait a second you're using satellites to get ocean temperatures so all right let's play again fifth highest global ocean temperatures and also the smallest march ocean temperature departure from average hmm interesting And see, so this is the thing where they're going always back to the 1880s when they're talking about the ramp up in global temperatures. Or they'll arbitrarily pick some random spot at the very lowest point in the last 45 years for the satellite record and start counting from there upward versus going for the average and really using what's below or above average temperatures. Now, please notice the ice is very important how they're manipulating the data here. Second smallest in the 39 year record. You'd use temperatures back to 1880 to just prove your point. There's reliable sea ice data clear back to at least 1901. Why do we only use from 1979 forward for the ice data? Oh, because they're saying satellites are more precise. But wait a second, you just told me I couldn't use satellites to do anything to show temperature. 1901 to 1910. Very specific sea ice. We had a lot of ships going through the area. 1911 and 1920, and it just keeps rolling forward. We have full sea ice coverage data of the Arctic ice extent for the, at least the last 120 years. And you know, you got to take into consideration what's happening with the global temperatures. There's so much fraud going on with NASA temperatures. I have below in the description box to these portals with at least 300 different links to stories about NOAA temperature fraud in the exact location, how they changed the temperatures, how they cooled things in the past to make it look warmer, etc. Real Climate Science, Tony Heller's site, linked below. What's up with that is a treasure trove of NOAA temperature fraud linked below as well for you. Not a lot of people know that. That also links out to Jennifer Morrissey's site. A double treasure trove of hundreds of articles on NOAA temperature fraud. They even include the stuff all the way down in South America. Well done. Looking at Arctic sea ice volume, May 21st, you're told it's the lowest. It's melting. It's the second lowest in the 39 years. Well, the black line is where we are. Pretty much right at the average. And see, this is the thing. They never like to use the last seven or eight years to show the trend reversal. And this is a really inconvenient chart because it only shows what the last five years compared to the 2004, 2013 mean. So if it's still in the averages, it means it's not decreasing any longer, that it's actually starting to rebound. Also, when they talk about 1979 forward, they always conveniently leave out 1971. And you might ask yourself why, because that indeed was the lowest sea ice extent. Compare that with 2017 sea ice coverage. The global warming agenda is just literally blown out of the water. Now back to the 1901 to 1910 Arctic ice coverage. Again, they never really want to reference this in the climate debate going back 100 years on ice coverage because the Northwest Passage was open back then. And we've been told it's the first time ever and we're the ones causing the warming and the Northwest Passage wouldn't be open without us. And oh, when they find this, they say, oh, we're making it open longer now. And here we go again. This is a progression from 1935, 37, and 38, which was considered the Dust Bowl. But NOAA has absolutely flipped those, made that look as if it was cooler. They actually cooled that instead of warmed it, so then it would look like it's an increasing trend in temperature. When we start to take a look at the Dust Bowl era Arctic sea ice extent, compared to what we saw in 96, 2000, 2006, and 7, you start to see the reductions are matching lockstep. You know, the climate has absolutely flipped in the last two to three years into a cooling trend. And Dr. Wahid Udin takes us out to 2050, showing indeed that we're going to drop at least another 1.5 C, maybe a little more up to around 2 C. But he's also saying the same thing. Why does it take two years of research before you can even extract NOAA monthly database information? And then he even claims here it's only on fabricated anomaly data series. Yeah, I'll agree. Thanks for pointing that out. 
Here's a bit of a wide out on that. So you can see where we are predicted to go with temperatures. So how many scientists now does this make that are showing global temperatures cooling in the future that don't agree with global warming? Thousands now. And the correlation of temperature deviation and monthly CO2 concentration increases since 1950. This one just kind of speaks for itself. There's really very little narration needed. But I linked this below too so you can do your own research on it. We, we've been told that uh, this year is, whew, it's getting really hot really quick and it's just scalding everywhere. I'm gonna take you over to Surgat here, seventh longest river. Somehow there's all these ice anomalies. So much ice in, in fact piling up that it's now breaking railings, pulling people into the river that are close, knocking over foundations. It's pretty interesting what's happening with the amount of ice going on there. Again, 700 billion tons more snow this year, which was not predicted. We've got the greatest snowfall on Kilimanjaro glaciers in years. This is off Glacier Hub. They have some amazing images and really good information on Glacier Hub. I think they're pretty balanced in what they're talking about with gains, with losses, and how they're compiling their information. A highly recommended visit to that site. Anyway, taking a look here from the Centennial 2. This is the March 2018 images. Gains are coming on glaciers across the planet now. And you know, this is off Ice Age Farmer. He's been following a lot of the crop losses and really pointing out these multi-decadal cycles of drought and flooding going on in South America. And then a, a viewer sent this in. Thank you so much. Late ice out in Jackson Lake in the Teton National Park in Wyoming. But this is just one among hundreds hundreds and hundreds of instances of late ice out, meaning the last time that there's ice in a lake that before it's completely melted out in the United States. And I'm sure it's going on globally, just not getting as much traction because this is in English language that we're searching on the news feeds. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. And really when you see these earth just had the 400th straight month of warmer than average temperatures, you really really need to question these types of articles and there needs to be some culpability for such mistruths printed in our media. If I have all this information that I've just presented to you and you can search down hundreds and hundreds of NOAA data fraud instances, something's definitely going wrong and they're still pushing this agenda which means you are absolutely on your own. They're not going to warn you about the changes and they just want you to keep believing that it's going to continue warming to not even prepare for what's happening with the cooling. So indeed, in my personal opinion, you're on your own to sift through the information and you are absolutely on your own to prepare for this event.